Oh my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Y'all, just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. What a year it's been. Can you believe it? It's hard to believe that 2022 is coming to an end. So we here at DBL wanted to look back on some of the biggest stories of the year that got us and you talking. So let's begin here. It was an emotional day here at DBL after the Supreme Court decided to overturn Roe v. Wade, which made access to abortion a federal right in the U.S. in 1973. Both Tori and Jeff had strong opinions on the fallout. Watch. When you go to have an abortion, and if I, God forbid, you don't ever have to, it is a difficult decision. It is a hard decision. You make it with your partner or alone with your doctor. The last person that should be in that room, in my opinion, is the United States government telling you and mandating you to carry to term even a baby from rape and incest. In Missouri, my friends, as of this taping, it's illegal. They have shuttered the abortion clinics. Welcome to Handmaid's Tale. It's a, it's a day that will live in infamy, as Hillary Clinton has said. For me to see my wife go through two childbirths and create two beautiful baby boys, one being a C-section, one being a natural birth, and to see what her body went through on both, right? And even in our own home, we're like, should we have another child based on what your body went through? Mm. And to not give a woman a right to choose what her body goes through is not American to me. And this is an American choice. And a lot of people view me as a Republican on this show. And it's like, that's why I hate political parties, because it's all about your own choice. And yeah. that's well all said. I'll say on that. That was a fantastic take I had. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It was beautiful. No, it is. I mean, I we wanted to, to start the, the year in review, right, about you know, on a lighter note. But unfortunately, we talk about heavy stuff a lot on this show. and. Uh, you know, we learn from each other, and that was just my take learning from my wife. You know, that's right. what life is. I all think about. that's what it is. It's like this issue, we all come at it from different angles. You know, you guys are women of childbearing age. I have a young daughter who's coming into those years. For the next 20 years, she's going to be dealing with the fallout from this. But you, you as a husband, everybody just has these different perspectives, but it's all about wanting people to have the choice to make yeah. a very difficult decision. Absolutely, well absolutely. Well, Kanye West, remember him? He was someone who made headlines this year. Whether it was about his divorce from Kim Kardashian or his anti-Semitic rants. We even wondered if he, the media like us, should be talking about him. So here's my take on it as a proud Jewish person. Take a look. He is downplaying a monster, a tyrant, someone we killed, someone we fought, someone hard-earned Americans died to kill. And he's saying it because he's uneducated and doesn't know it. Or if he does, it's even worse. So what I say to you is this. This is from Simon Weisenthal. He's a prisoner of five camps and went on to try and make Nazi criminals get the justice they deserve. He said this, for evil to flourish, it only requires good men to do nothing. So Sam, I say to you, we must report when he says something like this. We must come back and say, no, you don't like Hitler. Nazis are evil. Here are the pictures. Here is the proof. There are still people living with tattoos. No, you are wrong. Thank no. You that. no. Thank you for that. No. I've got to give you a round of applause because that no. needed to be said. Thank you for that. Wow, that was a powerful take, Tori. I hate that you have to say that in 2022, though. Yeah. Or 2023, almost. Right, and what's crazy is a lot of people wrote me back and said, I thought you guys should stop giving him attention. But if you stop discounting the lies, that's how it starts. That's how it begins, and it would start all over again. So what we say about the Holocaust is never again. We will remember we bear witness, and that's so important to counter, especially with the rise of anti-Semitism right now. Yeah, Tori, we, we joke around a lot, but, like, I drove home that day thinking about what you said, and it was very impactful, and I love you for that. I love you, too. Thanks, so. Right. Well, let's get to some good news, all right, because there's good news out there, too. After nearly 300 days in a Russian prison, Brittany Griner came yeah. home. Erica had been following this story since day one, and so she was especially emotional when she heard the news. Take a look. I was seriously cried all morning because I, I think that there was a time when people started to lose hope. I really want to give a shout out to Tamron Spurwell. Um, she was on this story from jump. She started the change.org uh, petition. She was diligently tweeting and talking about it to make sure that Britney's name stayed out there. Um, so many people did the hashtag free BG. Um, your activism matters. Like, 
many active I know people give a lot of crap to people like oh posting something or tweeting something isn't doing anything and this was a case where what were we to do but to continue to put our name out there and because of this I also believe that it's going to benefit other people who are in that position so I am sending so much prayer and thought to Brittany and her family her wife Cheryl, uh, Cheryl um, stated that they are going to continue to fight to bring other Americans home in this moment it's a beautiful thing and I'm so so happy and Erica, I just want to commend you because a lot of people, to your point, do you get a lot of flack for just posting a hashtag, but it applies global pressure. It's almost yeah. like a signature of millions of point. people saying, I don't agree with this and my eyes are watching you. Right. So thank you for saying that because I feel like some people are afraid of virtue signaling when in reality, maybe their sincerity is just to keep the name in the headlines. Exactly. Um, and I think that we've overcorrected on a lot of this, a lot of this messaging um, because there are things that you can get out in the streets and, and do, but sometimes it's just important to keep a name out there, mm -hmm. to keep attention on the situation. And a lot of people did. Well said. Well, coming up on DBL, it is a family affair. We look back at our interview with Danny DeVito and his daughter Lucy. They tell us about working together and who really is the boss on set. Plus, a remarkable reunion story 50 years in the making. A mother and daughter will join us to talk about what brought them together. It's happy holiday season time. From our DBL family to yours, we want to wish you a happy holiday season. A happy holiday season. The good news is, hey guys, we're in the break here. There has been some legislation just passed recently that Biden just signed their Spec for Marriage Act. And if you didn't know, it not only codified um, same-sex marriage, but if you didn't know, it also did that for interracial marriages. A lot of people didn't know that. Um, loving v. Virginia. Loving v. Virginia. That's exactly right. A man and a woman who loved each other and one of their last names was actually Loving, which is so appropriate. They fought to uh, marry each other and this was not very long ago. I believe this was 1960s. 50s, 50, yeah, or 61, something in, around that air, area. And it became a Supreme Court case. And it was allowed that uh, interracial marriages are free and happy. And in fact, Clarence Thomas, one of the Supreme Court justices, is in an interracial marriage with Ginny Thomas, uh, his wife. And we were, people were worried after Roe got overturned, Al, that I think it might overturn Loving v. Virginia. Fair to be worried. I think we you were know, okay I think, to be uh, worried, yeah. I think everybody was in shock when abortion, I, I just didn't think, see that happening in our lifetime, especially, either. you know, when you start talking about federal laws. Erica, but I just have to say, you have such, gummies, she dude? has such self-control. You'll get a few gummies and eat them. I, welches. I keep <laughs> eating them. I can't have those because I'll just eat them until I'm sick. That's yeah, when I stop, stop eating. You can't, you pop and can't stop. Right, I'm pop not gonna stop eating it. Welch's fruit snacks until. <laughs> I love a fruit snack. It's but that's over. the difference right there between you two. Yes. Erica can do, can have boundaries and you do all. <laughs> My boundaries is when it's empty. Exactly. <laughs> I'm at the boundary. That's exactly right. Well, yeah. It's a big there bag. We go. I don't know. Yeah, I, I once to... told Al I was reading a book called Setting Boundaries, Finding Peace, and he wrote, Can my boundary be we never speak about this book again? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really I funny. love you so much. You're my sister. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's right. Ew, look at this one. Oh, Welcome back. They're a father-daughter duo who are lucky enough to work together in their new show, Little Demon. Check out our conversation with Danny and Lucy DeVito. So, Lucy, in Little Demon, you play Chrissy, who discovers her father is Satan and comes into her powers. So we've got to know, what's your demonic power in real life? Ooh. Ooh, I think I can, I, I think I can read some minds, oh. you know, I think that I, you know, sometimes can read between the lines, uh, in a way, um, no, demonic power, I mean, 
I, uh, you know, I think I like to party sometimes. So oh, okay. uh, Mary Lou told us life. the stories of her and Danny and everybody, so the apple doesn't fall far and from the, the party tree. stories. There we go. Yeah. I like the party. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always embrace a good party. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading between the lines, but that was pretty straightforward. Yeah. So I like that. So Danny, your son Jake directs Little Demons, or Little Demon, and Lucy plays the Antichrist. You play yes. Satan. What are you trying to tell us about the DeVito uh, the family DeVito dynamic? Family, the clan? <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, a, it's really a fun, uh, fun thing to do. Jake is producing and, and uh, Lucy and I work in the, uh, you know, working off of each other. We, we love to work together. And uh, when she brought it to me a year, I was, I think it was four years ago or so, she called me and said uh, her friends and her were thinking about this show where, um, she plays the Antichrist, and I play Satan. And I think I answered too fast. I, yeah. <laughs> I said yes right away. I've been having a ball with, with Luce and with Jake and with everybody, with Darcy and the whole the whole group of writers who we call, by the way, the demons. They are, they are really fun. That's great. That's awesome. Now, Danny, I got to ask you, because this weekend I was, uh, my daughter, my 15-year-old daughter and I were doing our first driving lesson. And I think she oh. ar she already knows with me that if she gives me any look, she can have anything she wants. But Aww. we try and act like that's not a thing. So, uh, you know, I have to ask you, because your daughter's right here, who's the boss when you guys work together? Oh, no, oh, oh, definitely Lucy. Yeah, I got face. that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> actually, the, actually, we it's really a give and take because, you know, we've been doing this. She's been watching, uh, you know, she we let right from the very beginning. Lucy's always read our scripts and talked to us about what we did. And now that and when she started uh, acting, uh, it was a reciprocal kind of thing. So we help each other out. We give each other notes and uh I think we're both pretty, uh, pretty on it when it comes to giving notes. Well, that, uh, when you but I, I, I draw the line, you know, I, I am the <laughs> yeah. boss. Well, Lucy, She's the boss. I, Lucy, I want to ask you, because he, he said that you were reading scripts. Was it inevitable that you become an actress? Like, were your parents ever like, yeah, you should do this, is, you're, you're right for this, or that you just kind of fell into it naturally? Yeah, I mean, I think I, well, of course, I grew up, you know, watching them and admiring them. And I grew up on, you know, sets of Cheers and, you know, Batman, whatever. Who um, didn't? So <laughs> I, I always wanted to, you know, be a part of that world. I always felt like I was a part of that world. And then um, I was actually a pretty shy kid. And then around ninth grade, I um, kind of... I got into drama and was able to um, kind of break out of my shell through acting, and so it felt um, it felt like a natural thing as well as you know just something that I had been you know ushered into, and you know. But my parents were very supportive and um, you know uh, collaborative, and they also said don't do this as a kid, go to college, and then you can figure it out. We're a showbiz family, but, um, you know, very um, kind of like grounded in the sense like um, we know the the crazy world that is out there that surrounds this this world. Yes. A lot of people have tattoos of your dad. What's the weirdest <laughs> or the, the best one that you've ever seen? Oh, I mean, the Danny Dorito is great. Um, <laughs> There was one that I thought, the one that was um, Danny DeVito, it was like someone's actual big toe Ew. with like, <laughs> it was a big DeVito. Oh my that God. was crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. You guys seem like you have a good time. Yeah. Yes, you do. Thank you so much, Danny and Lucy. We're so happy Thanks. to see you guys working Thanks and laughing together. That's the goal. That's the dream. Like, to our viewers, real. Little Demon airs on FXX and streams the next day on Hulu. We'll be right back. Thank you yes, so much, guys. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. <laughs>
Airport scanners at the time had difficulty detecting the chemicals that the terrorists planned to use, so the 311 rule was created. 3.4 ounces of each liquid in one quart size bag, one bag per person. Since then, screening tech for carry-ons has improved. CT scanners, which have been used on checked bags for years, are now being used to scan carry-on luggage in some airports. TSA says these scanners create such a clear picture of the bag's contents that computers can automatically detect explosives, including liquids. The good news is the technology works. The question is, what's the realistic deadline for having it installed? In the U.S., no time soon. A spokesperson for the TSA told Verify, claims that the 3.4 ounce limit on liquids is going away in 2024 are absolutely not true. But that's not the case at some airports in other countries. Amsterdam's biggest airport started using CT scanners for carry-ons back in 2021, allowing travelers to ditch those smaller containers. And the UK says they plan to switch over to CT scanners by 2024, so we can verify that most airports are not eliminating the 3.4 ounce container limit for liquids in carry-ons in 2024. The creator of that viral video posted an apology, clarifying that she was referring to airports within the UK. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Welcome back to DBL. Lisa Wright always knew she was adopted, but had no idea she watched her birth mother on TV as a child until they reunited 50 years later. Here is their incredible story. Lynn is 18 years old in an unwed mother's home giving birth to a baby. They put a little towel over my face so that I couldn't see her, but I could hear her cry. And it was the most painful situation. And then they took her away. The baby is Lisa, who was adopted. My adopted parents were just very open and transparent about the fact that I was adopted. My mom always told me that if I wanted to find out who my mom was, she would help me. So actually, my son Nicholas initiated the DNA test, and I got the results back. And it said, we've identified your uncle. You have an uncle. This is on your maternal side of the family. Lisa connects with her uncle, and then they talk on the phone. My brother calls me. He says, Emmy, there's a woman that's contacted me that thinks that I might be her uncle. And I said, oh my god, it's her, it's her. And so he said, well, wait a minute. Let me find out some more information. So he said, you know, just tell me, you know, tell me about yourself. And as soon as I said my birthday, he just went, oh. And I don't know what that meant, so I kept on talking. He just said, you know what, let me just stop you. He said, listen, you're my niece. I said, uh, how do you know? <laughs> and he goes, well, because I know when my sister had a baby. So at that moment, I'm, you know, sweating and crying and like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening. Lisa's uncle calls Lynn back. And he said, Emmy, she was born December 10th, 1964, and she is your daughter. And when he said those words, those were the first time that I'd heard those words. Finally, I said, well, what's my mom's name? And then he goes, yeah, her name's Lynn Moody. So I'm at my desk, so I Google it. I had the moment of, wait a minute, I watched her growing up on TV, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we're all in tears. Join us now to tell us more about their story, Lynn Moody and Lisa Wright. Wow. I just wanted to say welcome. This story is near and dear to my heart for a time that I don't have time to get into. But I have to know, and I think I'm speaking for the audience here, what show were you watching where you were like, am I watching my mom? Well, wait for it. The show is called That's My Mama. Wow. And, that, that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and you know, during that time, that show was must-watch TV. Like, that was our version of must-watch TV. And it was amazing. I watched her every week. And, and you know, who knew? God. Who knew? I, I could have never dreamt that up in about a million years, ever. Yeah. In Judaism, we call that beshert. It was meant to be. Yes. Uh, so, Lynn, <laughs> yes. yes, after it was confirmed, Lynn, that Lisa was your daughter, you gave her a call. And I just want to, if you could paint a picture about that very first conversation. How terrified were you? Yes. Um, when my brother gave me the phone number, he said she was at work and um, she was going to call me. So I didn't want to wait. I said, can I call her? So he gave me the number. <laughs> I called the number. 
I had a weak, weak, weak voice because I had been screaming and crying so much emotion coming out of me. And a uh, woman answered the phone and I said, hello, uh, can I speak to Lisa, please? And she said, this is Lisa. Is this my mom? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> are you kidding me? And when she said that, really, I did. Something inside me, just an inner calm and a warm, warm, warm blooded feeling came all through my body. And for the first time in my life, I was able to say, yes, honey, this is your mom. Oh. I mean, oh my God, I need a tissue. I know, I need a tissue I too. Felt it. I know. I felt that I was able to say that at that wow. time. It was just the most beautiful gift, the most beautiful experience. It made everything worthwhile. I'm... That moment of reconnection made all the pain, all the loneliness, all of it so worthwhile. <laughs> I'm so happy that you two found one another. I'm just, what a blessing. Lisa, you two then decided to meet in person. Tell us what it was like seeing oh Lynn for the first oh. time. You know, I, I, you know, I'm driving to her house and, you know, prior to when I first saw that picture pop up, the first thing that I thought was, oh my goodness, this is who I look like. Yeah. Cause yes. I grew up not looking like anybody right. around me and everybody else around me looked like each other. Mm -hmm. So it was just every day was a constant reminder, you know, that, you know, I, I'm, I don't look like anyone. So that was such a huge thing for me. So I'm, I'm the very next day, um, I'm driving to see my mom for the first time. And I'm nervous, you know, I grab baby pictures of me and I, you know, I'm grabbing photo albums and whatnot. And, you know, figuring out what am I going to wear? It's like I'm going on a date or something. It's ridiculous, <laughs> right? And so I'm nervous and I, I, I'm driving up the hill and my son's on the phone with me FaceTiming because he's in another state. And so, you know, he wants to be in the moment as well. And I'm driving up the hill and I see this pretty lady coming out in the street and she's waving me, come here, come Aww. here. And I'm like, oh my God, Nicholas, it's her, it's her. And I just kind of pull over in probably the worst way ever. <laughs> and I get out of the car and we just start hugging each other. And uh, my poor son, you know, for FaceTime me, but all he saw was the back of my mom's shoulder. <laughs> so, but her and I, you know, we hug and then we step back and look and then we hug and then we step back and look. And we're doing this in the middle of the street. Lynn and Lisa, for... I hate to interrupt. We have to go. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm not gonna hold I, I hour with you. It was so great having you on the show today. Thank you, you for sharing back. this inspiring story with us. Thank you. We'll be right back. Audience Much is in love. tears. Oh my God. <laughs> Here at Verify, we want to help people avoid getting scammed. That's why we dedicated a whole section of our website to fact-checking scam claims. But sometimes viewers reach out to us for guidance after falling for a scam. If that's you or someone you know, here are three things our sources say you can do right now to protect yourself. One, report it. If you shared your banking information or social security number with a scammer, report the scam to police, your banking institutions, and credit bureaus. If scammers have your social security number, they can open up lines of credit in your name. Stop scammers in their tracks by calling all three credit bureaus and freezing your credit. If scammers have your bank account or credit card info, call the bank and ask them to reverse the transaction or give you your money back. Next, change your passwords and add two-factor authentication to your accounts. A lot of personal information is kept in online accounts, including your email address, bank account, and social security numbers. So having a secure password and changing it frequently is key. Just make sure to pick one that's at least 12 characters long and don't use the same password for multiple accounts. Now, if it's an option, set up two-factor authentication. That requires you or anyone else trying to log into your account to have a second factor, like a security code sent via text message to gain access. Finally, check your computer and other devices for signs of hackers. Is your antivirus program up to date and running? Well, if the computer is unable to run any programs or is running really slowly, that could be a sign that it's been hacked. Disconnect the computer from the internet and take it to a reputable computer technician for inspection. If you suspect your cell phone may be compromised, contact your mobile service provider. Once you have access to your devices again, change your passwords and your PIN numbers. We have an article on our website full of helpful numbers and links. To access it, scan this QR code right here on your screen. With your Verify, I'm Ariante Till. Tis the season to return. 
but the days of free returns may be ending. Let's connect the dots. Just months ago, some stores were both refunding customers for an unwanted item and telling them to keep it. According to the National Retail Federation, in 2020, shoppers sent back $100 billion in merchandise purchased online. That more than doubled last year to over $218 billion. But now some companies are taking a different approach. Stores like H&M and Zara are making shoppers who want to return something help pay for shipping it back. It now costs almost 6 bucks to mail back an item to H&M. It may also be hit with restocking fees for electronics or other high-ticketed items. To help avoid shipping costs, stores are encouraging virtual try-ons. When it comes down to it, in-person returns are still your best bet. Many stores still offer full returns with a receipt, and Amazon shoppers can return items to Kohl's to avoid the shipping hassle. And that is Connecting the Dots. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. Welcome back. Before we go, did you all make New Year's resolutions? Well, the most common ones are losing weight, eating healthier, and exercising more. But studies show that 91% of people do not stick to them. So some experts say try making resolutions you can stick to, like give one compliment to someone a day, read one book a month or even a year, volunteer and get more sleep. Jeff, you inspire me always to be very specific but with my New Year's resolutions, but not only to have it in my mind, but to put, to, put it to paper. Tell for sure, why. because someone inspired me. And you have, I forget the percentage, but if you carry it around or write it in your phone or keep it in your wallet or your purse, you have a 30% chance more likelihood of hitting that goal, whatever it may Which be. Which is huge. So keep them small, right? Keep them small, make them attainable so you don't quit that first month. But then make some a quarter year out, halfway year out the whole year out, maybe a five year plan. I know it seems like a lot of work, but if you really want to follow your dreams, you have to have some sort of plan on how you're going to get there. And Erica, you're that. on a whole new level. You manifest with like vision boards and energy. Mm -hmm. Talk to us. Well, but Jeff is right. I have a, a piece of paper that my husband and I just found from 2016 and we had drawn the plans of what our backyard would look like. Whoa, and dude. that's what our backyard looks like wow. right now. Chills. Like it's really important to do those things because it's like it plants a seed that never ever leaves. I love that. All right, DBL is new every day. We'll see you Monday, same time, same place. Happy New Year, everybody! Yay. Here's to 2023. What is that? Over the past few years, law enforcement agencies have warned about the dangers of fentanyl. Some of those warnings have come alongside viral videos of officers appearing to overdose after being exposed to the lethal drug. But some medical experts question just how dangerous short-term fentanyl exposure is. So let's verify. Can being briefly exposed to fentanyl cause an overdose? Our sources are the American College of Medical Toxicology, the CDC, and a medical toxicologist. Fentanyl is a synthetic drug that the DEA says is 100 times more powerful than morphine and urges law enforcement to take precautions when processing it. It is extremely dangerous to users and to those who simply come into contact with it. You cannot just touch fentanyl and overdose. I believe that they are very real symptoms. They are just not consistent with an opioid overdose or a fentanyl overdose or, or any other fentanyl analog. Toxicologist Ryan Marino says your skin provides a layer of protection against fentanyl and an overdose would require somehow ingesting the drug. And it would have to be quite a large quantity as well. It would never be kind of an accidental exposure. That's backed by the CDC, which says skin contact is not likely to lead to overdose. And the American College of Medical Toxicology says the risk to law enforcement in particular is low. So it's false that being briefly exposed to fentanyl can cause an overdose. In its latest guidance on handling fentanyl for first responders, the DEA says inhalation is most likely to lead to harmful effects, but says breathing in the substance is less likely to occur than skin contact. With your Verify, 
I'm Brandon Lewis. This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. We're doing something a little bit different today. Yep, we are looking back at some of the biggest entertainment stories of the year. We got to start with this one. Will Smith, and unfortunately that slap heard around the world. The day after Will slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars, we were all still processing what had happened. But as a comic, Al had this to say. It, it made me think that this is what every comic is scared of and why we also love comics because we are asking them to go up there and make a joke about something that might be unpleasant, that might be funny, silly, sexual, whatever. We're asking them to do that. But if you miss now, not only can you risk being canceled, but you can risk being assaulted. I know almost as many comics as I know that have been assaulted during and after a show that have not. And this kind of violence is not okay for a number of reasons. Yes, it was, a, it was an incredible, incredibly sad moment, but it undid everybody's work from that night. All the fashionistas, all the people working the red carpet, all the people driving the celebrities there, all the people cooking the food. Uh, it was, we the were winners. 10 minutes away from having the best Oscars ever, Sam. We were all organically texting like, this is great, Amy's hilarious. Oh, it made me cry. And now we just have to talk about an assault. So this is what happens when you put your hand on another adult. It undoes everything. And now you have unleashed a train, Jeff, Tori, Sam, that you cannot put back in the station. What are, you, what are your feelings now, almost a year later? It, it's weird because it's still kind of just sitting there simmering because we haven't had that closure with this. They haven't had that moment. We haven't really even had that special from Chris that like if he explains it all or you, even if you went on Instagram Live and said it, we, it's still just sitting there and it definitely affected Will Smith's last movie and it's still affecting his public perception. And you know, it really is Chris Rock's to decide to, to leave or to pursue. So we'll see in 2023. Well, I guess we'll have to continue to wait for this. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, who could forget the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial? Johnny's name was eventually cleared, but in the process, we got to hear some bizarre details of their life together, including one ritual where Amber would take off his boots. Watch. It's the removal of the boot ceremony. Yep. That, I don't understand it. I've been there. But sometimes what? it be like if I had that. A nickel. So like, why are we acting like it's that crazy? Do you have a routine? No, but I might tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, Johnny did it. I did try when my husband went back to work just a couple months ago. I tried the uh, dirty martini at the door thing. I did that once. Uh, because his uh, mother <laughs> was telling us the story, and this was many, many years ago. But she used to do that for her, uh, her father when he got home. She would have this martini, dirty martini. And Anthony was so, like, just invested in the story. I was like, I'm going to make my man a martini. And then he was like, I have to work out. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, I, I can't need be a vat of martini. vodka at 4.30 in the afternoon. I did that. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. They were like, we, and I was like, here's your drink. And Brooks was like, you look like you're trying to kill me. Yeah. I think it's very symbolic, but like having a martini at four, it's like your day's over. Yeah. You're, you're sleeping with your shoes on. So yeah. like, you need to know that. Unless you have someone removing those boots. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, Tori. I like that. Thanks, buddy. All right. All right. <laughs> Jeff, you come home from work. Jordan's oh. at the door with a tray and a martini. What would you say? I would be like, are you, are you drunk? <laughs> Obviously. It's weird, are you right? drunk? Right. Yeah, because she wouldn't do that. I mean, I like the gesture if she's trying to like spice it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I would, my first reaction would be like, maybe you're on, a, drunk. Would you, on a Friday, maybe like a, like a Friday martini. Does she got a fun outfit on? Yeah. Oh. Okay, note, fun outfit. Take note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I just had a visual in my head. Anyways. Oh. <laughs> just for these eyes only. <laughs> All right, so speaking of wonderful couples, J-Lo and Ben finally tied the knot 20 years after breaking up, but his younger brother Casey was a no-show at the wedding, which got us wondering if there was any bad blood between the brothers. Let's watch. I, I think we're digging way too deep, right? right? There's a lot of speculation. This is JLo's sixth wedding, mm -hmm. Ben's fourth. I don't even know. It's like, <laughs> buddy, my kid's sick. Right. You know what I mean? I gotta be home with my kids. When you get married again, I'll show up. You know what I mean? 
I think he posted a very nice, I, hey, uh, welcome to our dysfunctional family. That's every man's best speech, okay? He just did it online. Jen, you're, Jen, you're a gem, blah, 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 all that nice things. And what if that photo was a night out where they all bonded together back in the day and it means something to him? Can I, and ask, you, can it, I ask you a question, though? You want to fight about Ben Affleck? No, not at all. <laughs> she wants to fight about Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think it's weird that because there's Ben Affleck and J-Lo, they knew th it's not just any wedding. That would make the press... You know yeah, but I think they're real people. Okay. I really do. I, despite how much they're followed and we talk about Ben Affleck, I think they're very humble guys from Boston, and I think they still have one foot on the ground, at least I hope so. And they're just like, man, something happened. It wasn't a soccer practice. Let's keep this out of the media circus. Sure. I don't want to re-spark my uh, sexual allegations, right? I'm going to stay mm -hmm. away from the press. I'm going to stay home. My right. kids got this. I got my own family obligations. I love you, buddy. I agree, everything's, I agree Everything's got to be something. I agree with you, Jeff. I do. I, I didn't feel that way when we first started. Started, but you changed my mind. Wow. Okay, Terry Sam. <laughs> I, I want to hear from Erica because you've done a 180 on JLo, I heard. Well, it's not that. J-Lo was always kind of a sensitive topic for me. I do, I love her story, and I want to root for her because she's a success story. But there's something that's not sitting right with me about the her and Mariah Carey situation. And you know I'm team Mariah before anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that, it, That's a nice little team. There is a risk there. There might be a reason why she don't know her. Yeah. Ooh. Tune in to 2023. Right. I know. <laughs> Speaking about stuff we can't stop talking about, uh, there was a lot of behind-the-scenes drama on the movie don't worry darling and it came to a head when Olivia Wilde was accused of making her special salad dressing for Harry Styles <laughs> out of bounds out of bounds while she was still with Jason Sudeikis <laughs> turns out we had a few salad stories of our own <laughs> make a salad I, I make this Greek salad Ooh. that is when I finish it it's about 10 to 15 pounds <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, yes. it's such a heavy salad, so much so that one of our friends who at the time was playing in the NFL, he grabbed it to take it into one of our friend's houses and he's like, what is in this salad? <laughs> so now we call it Anthony's special salad. So if I made it and took it somewhere else and didn't make it for my husband, he would oh, be wow. very upset. If, well, if you would made he, it for another man, would he lay in front of a car? Well, I would never <laughs> make it for another I'm just man. Saying, I'm putting it in But too. if I was making it for like a party that I was gonna take it somewhere else and leave it he would have an issue with that so you could relate I can yeah. I can, I can. It's, it's, it's deeper than the salad tour. Yeah. <laughs> I, deeper than the salad. I have to say out of all the moves Olivia Wilde has made just to take it back to her this is my favorite one I feel like she has gone and tried to hide from the obvious elephant in the room every press conference every interview and this one she slyly just put it out and made fun of it that's the way you get rid of the 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 paparazzi kind of going at you you go on SNL and you make fun of yourself. You post the salad dressing recipe. So to me, great strategic move. Very I funny. I don't know about that. Oh, why? We're talking about that and not how crazy this whole weird breakup thing is. Now it's it, all olive oil. I don't know how weird it was. It seems like she left with another dude. Yes, yeah, she did, but I don't yeah, think it was think over a salad dressing. No, but it's like that, that to me feels like insult to injury. It's like, I don't know if, if God, I, I wouldn't even put anything. <laughs> if any of your spouses left you for somebody else and then on top of it, they gave them like your robe. Like you're telling me, oh, that would be a great article to post. That's like, a, that's a dagger. No, that's it's personal. The robe is different yeah. than a salad Absolutely dressing. Absolutely not. Like, it is not. Yes, but, it is. It totally what? is. You think giving another man your ex's robe is the same thing as the salad dressing recipe? Yes. No. Because it's you are. Personal. Listen, this is the difference it's between so men and women. I'm going to yes. say it because there is. If I find out my wife slept with somebody, I'd be mad. Right? If I find out she slept with somebody and cooked my favorite meal <laughs> and slept with them, twice as mad. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you can be <laughs> twice as mad, yeah, but it's not it. as if she cooked the meal. Would be like, would you be worse or would you be more mad if she cooked the meal or if she slept with them? That's a great well, question. Well, you got a thing. <laughs> you got a thing. <laughs> Are you ready to concede that we were right on this? No, you aren't. Yes. No, it's I, worse. I agree with it. Because the no. cooking of the meal, the ex example Jeff made, it takes time. She's stirring it, thinking about this other guy. And you, can yeah, make you know anything. what else takes time? The other thing. Mm. Yeah. No, you can make anything. You got to make his favorite. Mm -hmm. yep. it's, yeah. I'm with the boys on that yeah, one. Coming up on EBL, our interview with holistic plastic surgeon Dr. Yoon. He's warning us about some procedures people are trying to do on their own at home. And we take a look back at our chat with Laura Dern. She's telling us all about working with Hugh Jackman.
It's happy holiday season time. From our DBL family to yours, we want to wish you a happy holiday season. A happy holiday season. Yeah. Sure. Five, yes. four, three. Frank scored two. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Jeff is following the World Cup. We are wrapping up. And I don't know if, what's that? Who, who won? The World Cup. Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, in the future. You can, I mean, people can still know that you're following it anyway. Uh, I don't. I, you know what I, I love know. when a World Cup ends in the penalty kicks off on. They go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I was out of town. Did they do that this year? I don't know. I was watching something else. Oh, God. <laughs> Just Tori, wondering. Tori, can you watch a whole game of anything? Yeah, I can watch a whole game of football and yes. basketball. And I didn't know this. Is Brooks still a Chicago fan? Very much so. Yeah. And his dad still watches the Bears and takes notes on a whiteboard. Like and play oh, wow. and bets. He's eighty four yeah. and bets still. Like yeah. he's a guy a bookie. That's, that's so awesome. does he bet against the Bears? I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty good bet. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he knows. I, I, sometimes I bet against the Bears, like when I'm watching, just to make it interesting, and I'll bet against them. So if it's like 20 bucks, I'm like, hey, I'll pay 20 bucks to watch the Bears win. You know what I mean? But if they lose, I'm like, I got 20 bucks. <laughs> Yay! It's weird it's so when you bet against your own team, though. Yeah. Like a, it is. It is. It's it just weird. I was it is always weird. Weird. concerned because on my team for um, football was the Washington. Commanders now. Yeah, the commanders now. But back then, you had to be like saying a weird slur, and I was like super weird. But I was a Baltimore Oriole fan, and it took me a long time. That's a good hat. Camden you Yards. Should... The, I have an old school Oriole. You you should. That the guy that more like the jokey Oriole. The Oriole. Dude, that's yeah. Yeah, he's like. Mm. That's a good hat. It's a great hat, and it's yeah. in black with nice orange pigment, good white, crisp. But again, old school Oriole. Oh, it's a bird, by the way. I didn't know it was. I think people know that. I didn't for Were like a long time. Cookie? I was. <laughs> and I'm hungry now. You should get an Oreo hat an and Oreo. an Oreo hat. Just like an Oreo. That's terrible. <laughs> so yeah, it's the Orioles. And that's My kids would love that hat. Oh, really? They'd, you'd be a big hit if you wore an Oreo cookie hat. Oh, Oreos are the best. Interesting conversation. Double stuff or not, you let us know. Of course. I'm a... Welcome back. There's often shame, guilt, and ignorance surrounding the issues of mental health. And earlier we spoke to Laura Dern about her new movie, The Sun, that looks to open a conversation about the mental health crisis. Take a look. Laura Dern, welcome back to DBL. Yes. So excited so to hear from you. Back. So let's talk about The Sun. Um, in an interview, you said you cried reading the script. So what moves you to tears? I thought he was gonna... What? He scares me, okay? In this case, um, as you all well know, and as we've learned from the numbers during this pandemic, uh, the other horrifically heartbreaking epidemic is around not only mental health in general, but teen and young adult mental health. So what moved me to tears is that the amazing Florian Zeller, our writer-director, along with Christopher Hampton, who adapted Florian's play, they gave a script that captures not only the heartbreak and the shame, tragically, that is filled with a mental health crisis yes. and how we can move through shame into being truthful about what all of us have been going through in our families and in our lives, but also in the case of myself and Hugh Jackman as the parents to this boy, the powerlessness. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the lines in the script from a doctor to us as parents is sometimes love is not enough. Wow. And um, it, it sums up what really broke my heart open uh, reading this script and how grateful I am to be part of this massively important story. I, I, I was just <laughs> gonna say, Tori, before we continue, one line that really got me was just like when you said, I feel like a failure. And, you know, as a parent, and I think as a parent of three, that's all your, that's your worst nightmare is feeling like you failed your kids and you did your best. And mm -hmm. it's, it's something that every parent walks around with. And we never say it. We smile and say the kids are great, but it's a great fear. And I appreciate you, that, uh, you and that script getting that sentiment out there because I think a lot of us carry that every day. And Thank you. Amen. Yeah. And, yeah. and on that same track, uh, what do you hope people take away from this film? 
Well, I know for our writer director, he keeps saying, I want this conversation to be everywhere. We are all having it at our dinner tables. We're all having it in our families. People have talked about unparalleled levels of anxiety for these yes. last couple of years, particularly. We have to have a collective conversation for a child to feel shame because they are having anxiety or depression and feel they can't talk about it or they're the only one who's ever experienced it. That's on us mm -hmm. as, a, as a culture. Yeah, and we I yeah. must have a paradigm shift. What's funny, Laura, is why we love you so much is this show in particular, which is rare in daytime, has been particularly deliberate about talking about mental health. I've been very open about clinical depression, my own anxiety and panic attacks, because the conversation needs to be normalized, just like you're saying. No one's discussing it, then we're not going to move forward. So I just want to say thank you for our audience and for our hosts here who have been open to have a representation of what a lot of people are going through and no one's talking about hugely Thanks important back to you for for in your own authenticity and honesty with your audience but also giving a platform for the conversation and I just want to say I think you pick well I love what you pick from all the way from being Ellen's girlfriend I've always thought of you so highly from that to this to Jurassic mm -hmm. whatever I always go to see you because you pick beautiful scripts and I'm so thankful you are here on DVL Laura it was so good speaking with you. An Instagram video with millions of views says you can ditch your travel size containers in 2024 because airports are getting rid of their limits for carry on liquids. People in the comments are both excited and a little skeptical. So let's verify. Are airports eliminating the 3.4 ounce container limit for carry on liquids in 2024? We went to these sources for an answer. Limits to carry on liquids have been in place since 2006, when UK authorities thwarted a terrorist attack that planned to use liquid explosives hidden in carry on bags to blow up several passenger planes. Airport scanners at the time had difficulty detecting the chemicals that the terrorists planned to use, so the 311 rule was created 3.4 ounces of each liquid in one quart size bag, one bag per person. Since then, screening tech for carry ons has improved. CT scanners, which have been used on checked bags for years, are now being used to scan carry-on luggage in some airports. TSA says these scanners create such a clear picture of the bag's contents that computers can automatically detect explosives, including liquids. The good news is the technology works. The question is, what's the realistic deadline for having it installed? In the U.S., no time soon. A spokesperson for the TSA told Verify claims that the 3.4 ounce limit on liquids is going away in 2024 are absolutely not true. But that's not the case at some airports in other countries. Amsterdam's biggest airport started using CT scanners for carry-ons back in 2021, allowing travelers to ditch those smaller containers. And the UK says they plan to switch over to CT scanners by 2024, so we can verify that most airports are not eliminating the 3.4 ounce container limit for liquids in carry-ons in 2024. The creator of that viral video posted an apology, clarifying that she was referring to airports within the UK. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Day Till. Welcome back. We've all seen those viral videos circulating around the internet telling us how to look better, faster. So here to tell us, fact from fiction, our favorite holistic plastic surgeon, Dr. Yoon, and a warning to our viewers, some of these procedures may be graphic. Check it out. Dr. Yoon, why do you think there's so many viral beauty hacks on TikTok and cosmetic sort of do-it-yourself trends? It's everywhere. I think it's because these videos, they tend to go viral, okay, because everybody wants to look better and feel better and they want the easy way to do it. And people are making these videos because they want the clout of going viral. Yeah. When a video goes viral and it's your video, you get this dopamine rush and it's almost like gambling. It's like if when you win, win gambling and you want to do something else. And so unfortunately, <laughs> this has driven a lot of people to put misinformation out there and to make recommendations that a lot of times don't work and some of them are even dangerous. Okay. Yeah, so how can you tell Dr. Yoon what's real and what's a scam? Well, the first thing is you want to find out who is actually presenting that information to you. So if you're looking at beauty and skincare, you want that information to come from a dermatologist, a plastic surgeon, or an esthetician. You don't want it to come from necessarily somebody. I mean, if it does come from somebody who doesn't have, let's say, that type of background, then you want to think, 
is it too good to be true? Does this sound too good to be true? And if it does, then you gotta wonder if maybe this is not accurate information. <laughs> Dr. Yoon, what are the most horrifying trends that you yourself have seen on the internet recently that you can warn us about? Yeah, there's some pretty crazy things. The first one I would bring up is carboxytherapy. And there are videos of this treatment where you stick a needle into the person's eyelid oh. and you fill it with carbon dioxide gas. No. And the, the idea is that carbon dioxide gas will cause circulation to go to that area. And there are all these claims from anti-aging, reducing wrinkles to improving cellulite, all these things, yet none of them are scientifically proven. Uh, Doc, I think the piece, be, uh, you know, why you resonate so much to everybody on the internet is you keep it real. So I know you'll tell us what you don't like. Are there any DIY trends that you were like, that looks good? <laughs> There is a good DIY trend that's huge right now called skin cycling. Uh, skin cycling is a tree is basically a four day skin cycle where you uh, start with day one where you exfoliate your skin. Day two, you use a retinoid, which is a great anti aging type of a cream. And three and four, you recover your skin. This is based off a friend of mine, dermatologist Dr. Whitney Bow. Very, very popular trend, and it really does work. And it's based off real scientific principles. So if you want your skin to look better, try skin cycling, it does work for a lot of people. I'm seeing a lot of these lip plumping. That is that a good thing, a bad, like to the point where some of their results to me look very not, not what the person intended. So lip injections have to be done by a licensed practitioner, a nurse or a doctor. But there is a device that you're oh, seeing here called yeah, the Hyalon pen. Yes, and this is a device that shoots the substance with an air pump underneath the surface of the skin. <gasps> what are we doing? The problem with this is, is if you're lucky, you can get plumped up, lumpy lips. If you're unlucky and it pushes that filler into a blood vessel, your lip can literally turn black <gasps> and can die and fall off. And you, you can have literally no lip afterwards. Good God. There oh. are dermatologists and plastic surgeons all around the country that are encouraging people, don't do this. Yet you see these videos all the time because it's cheap, it's inexpensive, and you can buy these things literally on like, on normal like big box uh, stores online. It's crazy. What? Okay, so really quickly then, we only have about a minute left. How can people achieve the results that they want without putting themselves in harm's way? Well, the big thing is you want to once again see who is putting this information out uh, to you. And if you see a video and you go, wow, this sounds great, I should do this, and you're not sure if it's gonna work or if it's dangerous, tag a doctor like myself, or there's so many other dermatologists who are on social media, and look for videos that do wet them, that basically will show you whether this treatment is either fact, it works, or it's cap, it's a big lie. Because a lot of doctors like myself are out there debunking these types of videos. Oh. And no doctors use the word cap, so I yeah. appreciate it. Sam, what does that mean? I, I don't know. Cap was, means real. No, I was it does hoping not. It doesn't? Yeah, take well, no, cap means yeah. Yeah, fake. Please tell them, Doc. I, go ahead. Cap means fake. It's a, it's a oh. Gen Z term that my kids use, and that's how I know it. Otherwise, I so would So the opposite either. of yeah. what I said. <laughs> thank you, thank you, As thank always. you, Dr. Yoon. We love you, thank and thank you. you for keeping the people safe and informed. DBL Nation, Dr. Yoon has some incredible videos on his social media debunking trends like these, so make sure you check him out at Tony Yoon, MD. We'll be right back. Thanks, thank you, Doc. doctor. Right, no cap. No cap. Here at Verify, we want to help people avoid getting scammed. That's why we dedicated a whole section of our website to fact-checking scam claims. But sometimes viewers reach out to us for guidance after falling for a scam. If that's you or someone you know, here are three things our sources say you can do right now to protect yourself. One, report it. If you shared your banking information or social security number with a scammer, report the scam to police, your banking institutions, and credit bureaus. If scammers have your social security number, they can open up lines of credit in your name. Stop scammers in their tracks by calling all three credit bureaus and freezing your credit. If scammers have your bank account or credit card info, call the bank and ask them to reverse the transaction or give you your money back. Next, change your passwords and add two-factor authentication to your accounts. A lot of personal information is kept in online accounts, including your email address, bank account, and social security numbers. So having a secure password and changing it frequently is key. Just make sure to pick one that's at least 12 characters long and don't use the same password for multiple accounts. Now, if it's an option, set up two-factor authentication. That requires you or anyone else trying to log into your account to have a second factor, like a security code sent via text message to gain access. Finally, check your computer and other devices for signs of hackers. Is your antivirus program up to date and running? 
Well, if the computer is unable to run any programs or is running really slowly, that could be a sign that it's been hacked. Disconnect the computer from the internet and take it to a reputable computer technician for inspection. If you suspect your cell phone may be compromised, contact your mobile service provider. Once you have access to your devices again, change your passwords and your PIN numbers. We have an article on our website full of helpful numbers and links. To access it, scan this QR code right here on your screen. With your Verify, I'm Ariante Till. Tis the season to return, but the days of free returns may be ending. Let's connect the dots. Just months ago, some stores were both refunding customers for an unwanted item and telling them to keep it. According to the National Retail Federation, in 2020, shoppers sent back $100 billion in merchandise purchased online. That more than doubled last year to over $218 billion. But now some companies are taking a different approach. Stores like H&M and Zara are making shoppers who want to return something help pay for shipping it back. It now costs almost six bucks to mail back an item to H&M. And they also be hit with restocking fees for electronics or other high ticketed items. To help avoid shipping costs, stores are encouraging virtual try-ons. When it comes down to it, in-person returns are still your best bet. Many stores still offer full returns with a receipt and Amazon shoppers can return items to Kohl's to avoid the shipping hassle. And that is Connecting the Dots. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. DBL is all new every day. Okay, welcome back to TBL. We're going to dip into the old DBL mailbag. Don't give me that look. Okay. It sounded weird. Uh, it's the mailbag that the viewers write in questions for us. So this question is to all of us from Sydney. She says, you all seem so close. Do you ever spend the holidays or special occasions with each other? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We did Friendsgiving one year. Yeah. Yeah, that was then fun. COVID, COVID knocked things out for a couple of years. Yeah. But then, uh -huh. like, you know, we did Super Bowl party. We do that Super Bowl cool. almost every year. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Erica throws We're gonna it We're going to be doing Seder. I yes. said I'm down. I want to do that. Win, win. Passover. Yeah. That's going to be a 2023 tradition. All of you are there. Yes. I love this. 100% uh, I'm in. Yeah. Yes. You could pass me over. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. Happy New Year. Yeah. every day. We'll see you Monday, same time, same place. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh,